Howdy. In this video what we're going to do is we're going to introduce how to take integrals or antiderivatives. Um, so far in the past year, the past semester, we've been doing all derivatives and now we're just going to go the other direction. So let's say I have some arbitrary a x to the n where a and n are just any numbers. The way that I like to do this, especially when first starting out, is I like to rewrite my constant and my variable. Then I add one to the top, I take that number, flip it, multiply it in front, and then plus c. Always, 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 always write plus c. The reason we write plus c is because whenever you, what I want to do is whenever I take the derivative of this function, I want to go back to the original, okay? Because we're taking the antiderivative, and the derivative of any number is zero. So we could have had a one here, a two here, a three here. Who knows? That's why we have some arbitrary constant, which we'll call c. Now, if I want to take the integral of any number, say some number a, then all you're going to do is you're going to take that number multiplied by x, and then plus c. Okay, uh, let's take a look at cosine. Let's think about this. The derivative of cosine was a negative sine. So because I'm taking the antiderivative, this is going to equal a positive, okay, it's going to be positive, and then if you have a number on the inside of that, you're just going to flip that number, you're going to divide 1 over a sine of that ax, and then plus c. But the big thing is that this is positive, okay, and then as for sine, we know the derivative of sine was a positive cosine, and so in this case, the antiderivative, or the integral of sine, will be a negative 1 over a cosine of ax plus c. Finally, notice with the, with the e. Um, notice how here, whenever you have a number on the inside, I keep dividing by that number. Number on the inside, keep dividing by that number. Same, um, same principle here. If I have e to the ax, then what's going to happen, the antiderivative of this will be 1 over a e to the ax. So I know, oh, plus c. So I know that this is arbitrary. Okay, let's actually put some concrete numbers to it, but before I actually uh, integrate this function, we need to rewrite a couple of things so that we can use our rules. I'm going to go ahead and algebraically rewrite this as, uh, well, 3x squared is okay, but we know that the square root of x, we know that this is x to the one-half, okay? The minus 5 over x cubed, in order to actually use our rules of integration, we need to bring that x cubed to the top, but when I do, we make that a negative exponent. Uh, the e is okay, so I can go plus 12e e to the 2x. Now, ch take a look at this. I have the fifth root of x squared. Whenever you have numbers on the inside and the outside of a radical, the way you algebraically rewrite this, it's always x raised to the inside over outside. So this is x to the 2 fifths. And the cosine and sine are fine. So plus cosine of 10x plus sine of 15x. Okay. Now that I have this algebraically rewritten, now let's actually integrate. A big cardinal sin that I see people do all the time is they'll take the integral of 3x squared and then algebraically rewrite this as x to the one-half. Don't do that. Okay, please don't do that. What you need to do algebra first, and once you've algebraically simplified everything, then go ahead and actually do calculus and either take the derivative, or in this case, we'll take the antiderivative. And so, the integral of 3x squared, I rewrite my constant and my variable. I add 1 to the top, 2 plus 1, that's 3. I take this number, flip it, multiply it in front, which, hey, 3 divided by 3, that's just 1, so that's nice. But let's take a look at that x to the 1 half. Okay, so first thing I do is I add 1 to the top, and check out this cool trick for adding uh, fractions by 1. What is 1 plus 2? Well, I know that 1 plus 2 is 3, therefore it's going to be 3 halves. Okay, and I'll come back to that again later. Anyway, so I add 1 to the top, take that number, flip it, and put it in front. You could divide by 3 halves. That works as well, but I find it's going to be a whole lot easier with fractions just to go ahead and just flip that number. It's going to be a lot easier to deal with algebraically. Okay, this is negative 5x, negative 3, so you rewrite your constant in my variable. 
you add 1 to the top, negative 3 plus 1, be careful, this is a negative 2. I take that negative 2, flip it, put it in front. And so because I'd have a negative 5 divided by a negative 2, this is going to turn into a plus. Okay, for the 12e e to the 2x, uh, anytime I have a number in, on top of the e, just divided by 2, and I know that 12 divided by 2 is 6. So this will be plus 6 e to the 2x. Okay, um, take a look at this x to the 2 fifths. Okay, let's go back to our trick with adding fractions by 1. Here, I add 1 to the top. So the way that I do this is I do 2 plus 5 is 7, and so keep the denominator 7 fifths. I take that number, flip it, put it in front. Okay, and then finally with the cosine, notice how the integral of cosine will be a positive sign, but because I have a number on the inside, instead of multiplying by that number like we did with derivatives, we're going to divide by that number. So it'll be 1 over 10 sine of 10x. And then finally that sine, the integral of sine is a negative cosine. So this will be a minus, but because I have a 15, 1 over 15 cosine of 15x, and as always, plus c. Okay, go ahead, join us in the next video. What we'll do is we'll do some special integrals, okay? Um, with these, these are going to be a little bit trickier, but I'm going to talk about that in the next video.